Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm here with a new Master Duel video for you guys. I wanted to do this video for a while, but I had to get the cards for the deck, and it took me a little bit. But today, as you guys can tell from the title, we are playing my absolute favorite control deck. It is 100% rogue for anybody that doesn't like meta. But uh, we're playing Evil Eye. This deck is. This deck is fun. <laughs> it has its issues, that, that's for damn sure. But it is near and dear to my heart. And I'm really excited to show it to you guys. So, this is the build we're rocking with today. I'm not going to go over it like I have been, just because uh, this video is going to be already going to be kind of long. So, if you guys want me to do the whole deck profile, this is actually the build I use uh, in real life. And I would be happy to do a deck profile for you guys, but let me know in the comments. Uh, the two, I have a couple games to show you guys. They are a little bit long, because... The first game is, you know, us against El Lich with Control versus Control. The game took a little bit. But I promise you it's worth the watch. So I hope you stick around. But enough for me. Let's jump in and check it out. Alright. Game one is us versus El Lich. And we ended up going second. Which kind of sucked because this is a definitely a Control deck. This is definitely a deck that wants to go first. Our hand was immaculate too. Like, I absolutely love this hand. Our opponent starts off with Pot Extravagance. You know, banishes a random six draws too. We didn't have an Ash Blossom, so we couldn't stop. Oh well, shit happens. Our opponent ends up setting a bunch of cards and activates Golden uh, Golden Land. Curse Elf Land. That's the one. <laughs> I definitely just blanked out on that card's name. Pays 800. Pays 800 get, to get a search for a gold. It's a gold land or an Eldritch card, I believe. You guys see quite a few times during this game that you can tell this opponent does not understand Evil Eye or how to play against it because he makes a million misplays and does some things that would absolutely that you absolutely shouldn't do against an Evil Eye. Like he had outs to our particular boards, which we could still have kept playing, but it would have made it a lot more difficult. He just didn't even use any of them. <laughs> so we start off with Serzio, Watcher of the Evil Eye. For anybody that doesn't know, Serzil is Stratos on crack. It uh, on normal summon searches any evil eye card in the deck. Any evil eye. Whether it be a monster, spell, trap, anything. Our opponent flips over, there can only be one. Now, this stops us from using our extra deck because we can't. You know, the so evil eye is kind of a link based deck. But 100%, this does not stop us from playing. Serzil is a super powerful card. And we can just sit on it the entire game. So because you did that, we just grab Evil Eye of Selene. Again, for anybody who's watching this for the first time, Evil Eye of Selene is the most important card in the deck. It's what kind of sets the deck off. And this is why. Sergio, the card we are equipping it with right now, gains, while it has Evil Eye of Selene equipped, gains a quick effect where once per turn, it can destroy a special summon monster, target and destroy. Uh... The fun part of Evil Eye and the reason I like it so much is because every positive effect that you gain from Evil Eye of Selene has a negative effect to go alongside it. And the negative effects are supposed to be detrimental, but a skilled player who knows what they're doing actually can you know, make them beneficial. And that's just where the skill comes in, and that's why I like the deck so much. So the effect of Evil Eye, the actual effect of Evil Eye of Selene can only be equipped to an Evil Eye monster. The monster that's equipped to cannot be targeted. My card effect cannot be destroyed by a battle or card effect. So the monsters have been pretty much invincible. Um, if Selene is in the graveyard, you can pay a thousand life points, banish an evil eye, spell a trap card, and reset Selene, uh, Selene so it can recur itself. And every time I activate the monster to equip two's effect, or an evil eye, spell or trap card while Selene is equipped to it, I take 500 damage and the monster gains a permanent 500 attack points. Even if Selene gets, gets destroyed, the monster keeps the attack points. We end up setting infinite impermanence. 
No, I still be put infinite and permanence right in that, uh, there can only be one column, you, that becomes the play later. Our other card we set down is Evil Eye Retribution, it is a counter trap card, it is a spell and trap negate. Uh, I love that card because the biggest weakness of this deck is if you can, if you get hit with mass back row, uh, destruction, you know, Harpy's Feather, that's the Lightning Storm. So having a searchable out to that is fantastic. Oh, it's second effect. It's really, really cool. Uh, if you have Evil Eye on the board, it can't be negated. Now, I wasn't sure how that works. You know, it's a counter trap card. It's already harder to gain as it is. I'm sorry. I'm sk skipping through my opponent's turn. But use Curse of LN to search, and now he's playing uh, Black Elixir? Yeah. No, wait, I'm sorry. To summon from the deck. Oh, so back to the trap card. Um, as long as the activation is not stopped, nothing can negate it. You can activate it in, a, in an imperm column and it still works because it can't be negated. Alright, so he summons Golden Lord. Now, now that he has Golden Lord, Golden Lord is a special summon monster on his side of the field. So, Cersei's effect is live. After he sets another card, filling up his back row, he actually goes to attack us with Golden Lord. Now, I could have just took the hit. Obviously, Cersei still can't be destroyed by battle with Selene on it. But I wanted to get Golden Lord off the field. So, I just bumped him. Now, because we activated Cersei's effect, we take 500 and he gains permanent 500. So this is a little bit of a seesaw because now you have to be I have to be careful with how much life points I spend because I can end up doing more damage to myself than my opponent. Here's where he messed up. So Cerezil can't be targeted or destroyed right now. Fine. But Golden Lord's in hand effect doesn't do either one. It sends it sends a card straight to the graveyard. He should have added the Golden Lord to hand and just saved it. Oh, and one of his cards, his face down card that he just got rid of with the evening match. So, this guy's already doing something that's a little suspect. <laughs> I don't know why he would play evenly matched in a control deck. That boy's at the massive back row. Let's see. He adds back, he adds back Golden Lord and then immediately summons it. Making it so now, he can't get rid of Sergio. And I was okay with that. But that's, what, that's right there, so I know he didn't really know how to play this today. Draw a Dragon's Prison is perfect for this matchup. Because you want to banish those Golden Lords. So, we start, we, here comes Sergio's negative effect, where we have to pop one of our own cards. Our opponent sees it activating, goes to activate Skildren, which is hilarious, because he was going to save us from a detrimental effect, where... Sergio's detrimental effect is because we activated his effect to pop a card last turn and on a, the, the following scenarios we have to pop one of our own cards. But skill drain would have stopped us from making other plays. So I ended up using evil at retribution to negate it. If it's the counter trap card, unless he has another counter trap card, he can't change it. Now Sergio goes off. We're actually, it's funny because since we're in the same train, we can actually pop the evil action for retribution that we used. And now, because we activated Terrazil's effect, and because we activated an evil eye spell or trap card, Selene triggers twice, dealing us a thousand, but giving a thousand to Terrazil. Now we activate Infinite and Permanence. Obviously, using it on, on Golden Lord, he has no effect on the gate. We're purely doing it to stop. There can only be one. So we can actually make, you know, a bigger play. We summon another Cerezeal, which gives us another search. Our opponent activates Conquistador. Again, here's where you can tell he doesn't know how to play the deck. So, they're asking me if I want to use the other Sergio's effect. I don't care. He activates Kikisa. I'm expecting him to destroy my monster to prevent me from Link. 
but instead, you pop Selene. And as I said before, once Selene's in the graveyard, we could just recur as long as there's another, another Evil Eye Spell or Trap card in the graveyard. And when we use this turn already, Evil Eye Retribution. I just realized I could have won this turn. Huh. Oh, also, he, he put Conquistador in the Imperm Column, so it bounced to the back. Um, looking, looking at what I have now, I just realized that I could have actually went all the way into Axis Code Talker. So I could have searched our field spell, Evil Eye Paradalia, Evil Eye Domain Paradalia, played that, gives me a search for a monster. I would have searched uh, Basilisk. Basilisk special summons from Self from Hand because I control an Evil Eye monster. And then I could use Awakening to summon the Cataplast from my hand. Link for, uh, and then Link Climb up to Access Code Talker to get other Link monsters. Because I play, you know, Phoenix, uh, Unicorn, and all that. And then I would pop, I could have, nope. I lied. I, w I didn't make the right play because Golden Lord can't be destroyed this turn. Aha. But that was just another play I could have made. If, if he had had anything else besides Golden Lord, I could have gone all the way up to Axis Code Talker and popped his board and swung. So now we use Evil Eye Awakening to summon the Cataplast. And now we're linking three. So the monster we're summoning is Evil Eye uh, Xerzio, ruler of the Evil Eye. This is the, their big boss monster. This card is cool. So, first effect it has is, is alive whether you have Selene or not. If it was Link Summoned using a monster that had at least 2600 attack points, he can attack twice every turn. We had a Surge deal with 31, so now that effect is live. We end up using Selene's effect, banishing a spell trap, paying a thousand light points, resetting it. And we also use Evil Eye Repose. Repose's effect is. On activation, you could banish an Evil Eye card, draw a card. It's a continuous spell. When an Evil Eye, a monster equipped with Evil Eye of Selene, thousand a point, uh, attacks at a point monster, you can banish the monster. And if it gets destroyed, I get to take up to three banished cards from, uh, three cards from my banish and put them back into my graveyard. Now we just use Zer uh, Zerek, uh, Zerzeal's effect. We just use Zerzeal's effect, Zerzeal's effect, while it's equipped with Selene, it's a quick effect. I can destroy any card on the field. Uh, any card my opponent controls. Sorry. And then his negative effect is, on the following state of my face, he has to negate a monster that he points to. The cool thing about that is, if he negates a monster, it's a permanent negate as long as the monster's facing on the field. And if they're, if he's not pointing to anything, he doesn't negate anything. So it's a, an effect that you can, again, play around. But because we activated his pop effect, now our uh, Evil Eye of Selene activates, giving him an extra 500. And then it also triggers because of Repose, so now he's gonna gain an extra 1,000, jumping to 26, which makes him bigger than the Golden Lord, which was the reason that I even used that effect. So I know he gets a card, he gets to dump a card because of Curse Outland, but we didn't care, it was purely just a pump and pump. So now we go to Battle Phase, we swing in, because we attacked, we can activate Repose. Repose's effect banishes the Veil Witch. One down, two to go. And then we attack again to 36. We we're almost able to kill. I, just, I was trying to think if there was a way for me to activate another card. But I don't think Selene triggers itself, which kind of sucks. So now we activate Cataplast's effect, which is just while it's in the graveyard, if we control an evil eye monster, we can special summon it, but it gets banished after the fact. We did it for this. Uh, Cataplast has an effect where you can target one Evil Eye Spell or Trap card, and for the next round, until my until our following turn, it, it would be destroyed once, if not destroyed. But now we set a card, we end our turn, Infinite Permanence uh, wears off, there can only be one, triggers, again, uh, reapplies, I'm sorry, forcing us to get rid of uh, the cat. There's the effect activates. His negative effect is to negate something he points to. Obviously, he doesn't point to anything, but it still activates, which triggers Selene, giving him another 500 and dealing another 500 to us. He banishes uh, the White Elixir, ends up getting Huquero. Oh, I said that right. Huquero. 
So it's another one. Now he activates Gold Moon's effect on the grave, which is, you know, summon it out. Me, being the evil person that I am, activates Ice Dragon's Prison. Like I said, Ice Dragon's Prison is great for this matchup. If he had, if he had, had another zombie, we could have banished both. Well, instead, we just steal the other Lich. I didn't realize how good Ice Dragon's Prison was in this deck, but you could just take a monster from the grave and keep it. Not only do we stop the Golden Lord from summoning itself out, and we he got rid of the, the trap card, even though it didn't do anything. But the whole reason we play that card as well as Crackdown in this deck is because Evil Eyes link two monster, it can use any two monsters. As long as one of them is Evil Eye, the other monster doesn't matter. So stealing our opponent's monster to use the link away is a perfect way to get rid of monsters. So our opponent just ends because they can't deal with what we have right now. On the end phase, we activate Zer uh, Zerzeal. Obviously, we have to wait for him to activate his effect first. <laughs> but he can banish the Pinky Sword, set a card, we activate Zerzeal. We pop the, the new card that he said that we never ever see. We know the middle cards will pair up. We had a 50 50 shot. Turns out he had played a second Gold Quarrel face down. But now he sets a card. He's getting, he gets a uh, Scarlet Elixir. Selene activates because we used Zerzeal's effects, you know, dealing us on and gaining another hundred. He manages a Quarrel to set another card. If I recall, he sets another uh, Elixir, uh, Sanguine Elixir. has to negate a monster he points to, so he's automatically going to negate uh, Golden Lord. I don't even get the pick. <laughs> it's asking me if I want to change his, his destruction effect. I'm saying I'm waiting. But now, again, I take 500, he gains 500. So now he's up to 5k. The numbers for this deck sometimes get pretty insane. I played it at my locals and hands with one with a monster with, with what, 6,000 attack points. I was going to summon Ash Blossom just to give. I want to have a third monster that can deal damage, but I said fucking switch the battle phase because I had no attack points. The reason I attacked with Xerzio first is because I expected him to summon a monster. I wanted to be able to replay and swing with Xerzio and not lose out on an attack because if, he, if I swing with Elvish and he summons Elvish from deck in defense mode, obviously Elvish can't get over it and I lose an attack. So I went with Xerzio first. I go to activate Hakuero. I chain Jerzeal's effects. Hakuero is a continuous trap card because I popped it. He doesn't get any of, it, get any of its effects. Doesn't get the banish from my grave, but it just dies. So now he has to find another way to respond to my attack. He activates Scarlet Sanguine. We got the Ash Blossom, baby. And you can only activate one Scarlet Sanguine in a turn, so the other one that's face down doesn't do anything. So that's just a dead card now. But he has a nice Dragon's Prison. Guys, Ice Dragon's Prison doesn't target or destroy, so it gets around Evil Eye of So he summons Xerzeal from my graveyard. Banishes both Xerzeal. <laughs> Xerzeal and Xerzeal. Yes, one's with an S, one's with a Z. They're Gorgons, they're supposed to sound like snakes. Xerzeal and Xerzeal. Banish, banish. Ash Blossom negates Scarlet Sanguine. And Xerzeal pops a Quero. And because we stole his Golden Lord, we now have an extra attack to take the game. And that is the end of the first game. Again, I'm sorry this was a longer one. 
but I was really, really proud of the way this game came out. I felt like I played fantastic, and it just shows that even as great as the deck as Eldritch is, we were still able to take the game. The second game, though, we got to go first, and oh no, we went second in this one too. My mistake. But this game, our opponent did not get to play the game. <laughs> So they just set one and pass. This game is much faster than the last one, I promise. Alright. Pot of Extravagance. Now, I started off with Pot of Extravagance, but I did not care if this card resolved at all. We have plenty of cards in our hand to get to what we need to. And we get Evil Eye Awakening and Ice Dragon's Person. Our opponent hits us with Drone Lock, but Drone Lock does kind of suck. Because we were going to do a bunch of, you know, chain, uh, sorry, chain to get all the cards we need. But, it's neither here nor there. Instead, though, we go with a different, a different approach. We activate Evil Eye Reemergence. Right, but there's no Evil Eye Reemergences. It makes an Evil Eye token. 400, 400. Uh, but if you have Selene, it makes two. And then it has a great red effect as well. Because we have an Evil Eye monster now with the token, Basilisk can special summon itself from the hand. We activate Basilisk's effect. Or we're going to activate Basilis Effect. Basilis is a Foolish Burial for uh, Evil Eye cards. Spell and Trap cards specifically. It would actually be way better if it was monsters too, because it's a monster that brings itself back from the grave. He negates it with the Imprint Impermanence. Fine. Thankfully, we, can, we were able to play through the two negates. Oh, Remain, it's Graveyard Effect. Um, during my turn, I can banish it. To make it so my spell and trap cards can't be matched with for the turn. Can't be target. Uh, I think they can't be targeted and destroyed. It's meh. If it was either player's turn, it'd be broken. But during our turn, it basically makes it so they can't like flip up MST or use a monster effect to pop one of our spell and trap cards during our turn. So we link away the two monsters. This is our link two that you guys didn't see in the last game. This is Gorgon, Empress of the Evil Eye. He's the heart and soul of the deck more than any other more than well more than any other monster. Um, she gains 100 for every Evil Eye card in the graveyard. And while she's equipped to lean, she is a monster negate. She she can negate a monster effect for the turn. But then her detrimental effect is if she used the monster negate on the following state by phase, she has to destroy a card she points to. Her arrows are up and down. She points to nothing, she destroys nothing, but she has the potential to destroy either your opponent's card or one of your own. So again. Something you have to play around. Our opponent has made monster reborn and steals our basilisk. This was this was a little bit of a weird effect, a weird thing for me. Look at both graveyards to see you know, if I wanted to activate Ice Dragon's Prison, but I can't get rid of my own monster. I need something our monster, so I was just like, alright, cool. Ooh. Fusion Destiny. I was like, oh, alright, bet we're going up against DPE. Now, um, this next exchange that's about to happen, I feel like I could have played better, but we still end up, you know, getting control of the situation. So he sends us the usual Celestial and uh, Dasher, summons out DPE, DPE's effect. He immediately goes activated, which already bugged me out. Activate Ice Dragon's Prison. We're going to, we, we attempt to summon Celestial, and then we're just going to banish Celestial and enforce her. But our opponent is playing Ghost Bell, which stops us from snagging it. Which kind of sucks, because that would have been a really, really cool effect. I, I activate Crackdown. Again, our opponent makes a misplay here. I realized right away that this was a bad idea, but I didn't expect our opponent to misplay the way that he, that he does. So we get his monster, Ghost Bell negates, and then he gets to pop a card. He pops my monster on his board, Basilisk, and now he gets to pop any card we control. And he chooses to pop DPE. If he had just popped Cracked, I he would have got the DPE back, so I don't know why he did that. The activates DPE is Graveyard Effect, so it's going to come back on the standby phase, which again sounds like the same thing. If I had anything to negate its graveyard effect, he would have just lost the DPE. So 
unser DPI. Now knowing how Evil Eye works, he should have negated the effect right away. I mean not negated the effect, but he should have popped my monster right away. So as I played Repose. But we activate Repose. You guys saw this card in the last in the last uh the last game. Bash card, now we get the draw card. Let's we'll activate repose. We end up hitting him with a ghost ogre. Ghost ogre is so slept on. So DP has to destroy a card that you control no destroy another card on the board because when you destroy it with ghost ogre, he doesn't get to pop anything. And now he has no way to stop any of our players. We end up ripping a, Gorg a Gorgiano. So we activate Awakening. So Evil Eye Awakening uh, summons an Evil Eye from hand or from graveyard. And then if you have Selene, it can summon from the deck. We're using it to bring back Basilisk so that we can dump Evil Eye Gorgiano. Gorgiano is the other spell card for the deck. Oh no, we just start Selene, my bad. We, have, we don't need that. So Gorgiano is the card in my hand. It's the other spell card. If this were an early game, I would have used Gorgiano. I would have sent Gorgiano because Gorgiano can search. But because we already have Evil Eye spell and trap cards in the grave, we can just use some of these effects. So Gorgiano is an equipped spell. While it's equipped to an Evil Eye monster, it's treated as Evil Eye Absolute, so it's like having extra copies of it. While it's equipped, if your life points are lower than your opponent's, your one the monster equipped two games, the difference. So it's one of the cards that helps us OTK. So like if I if he was at seven thousand if we were flipped. My monster would be gaining six points. Its third effect is what makes it really, really good. If it's in the graveyard, you can banish it, discard any any evil eye card, search any evil eye spell or trap card. So it's another way to get into the actual Selene or Retribution to help us gain control. Um, we played it. I wanted to. I was trying to trigger Selene more so that way I could um, link off and make Zerzil. But he couldn't get him over, couldn't get Gorgon over 26. So we just swung for 24. Here comes Phoenix and Forcer back. Uh, anybody who sees this board can tell why we ended up, you know, having this. So, if he goes to activate Phoenix Forces effect, we have Gorgon, which is a, a four turn monster to gate. We also have an imprint face now. As long as we wait until he attempts to activate the effect, we can stop it every time. Like right, like right now. So we hit him with Gorgon. Gorgon negates the effect. Because we activated, because we activated Gorgon's effect, Selene goes off, plus 500 to her, minus 500 to us. So let's deal. Then I can do with the Gorgon effect. So good. <laughs> and our opponent swings it into our vessels. Five vessels. Now it's our turn and I'm pretty sure this is the last turn of the game. So draw phase. Yep, we get a paradigm, which means we can get automatically get another monster search, and we will be able to link into our link three. Which with 3,500 attack points, our link three is deadly. Gorgon's mandatory effect pops one of the cards it points to. He attempts to activate DP. I didn't I hesitated there because I wasn't sure if I wanted to use Gorgon again because I didn't want to burn another 500 light points for free. But 
There's no point in wasting my face, my, my face down. Renegade DPE. Gorgon goes off, popping a card it points to, though it doesn't point to anything, so it's fine. And then Selene activates twice. Our opponent ends up quitting. And that's how we won. Now, what would have actually happened in that situation had we kept playing is we would have played Paradalia, Sir Sergio, you Sergio, grab Retribution. So we have a spell and trap in the gate. And then we would have linked Sergio and Gorgon to make Zerzio. And then we would have re uh, react set Selene from the graveyard. Because we had Repose on the board, once we swung it into his DPE, we would have banished it and it would have been gone for the rest of the game. He was super banking on that card. I'm guessing he bricked. But that's the type of, the type of uh, way this deck can play. We had, we had to play... We went from playing a grind game in the Eldritch game to having complete control in the first in the second game. And the deck can also OTK things with equip cards. It's just a lot of fun. And it's cheap. And it is 100% rogue <laughs> all things that i like let me know what you guys think of this video if you guys have any ideas of things you want me to try with the deck let me know if you guys want me to do a deck profile let me know again i love this deck and i play it in real life if you guys want to check me on social media the links will be down below that's it for me i'll catch you guys on the next video later we gon' go some when we pull out with the shares How about the surface? We giving out them airs I'm with my psycho Raise your hands I'm motorcycle Akira, I'm out for mail I'm proxy in your body We gon' turn them into the